So now we do the seventh reading, which is the principles for effective data aggregation and risk reporting. It's uh, very theoretical, but fairly qualitative. And uh, let's see the exam focus here first. For the exam, understand how data aggregation principles interact and banks should not put one principles ahead of the other. So there are about 14 principles that you need to know and you need to, uh, uh, I would recommend you to memorize the names and what they mean. This talks about data aggregation and risk reporting. There are uh, some reporting standards that banks need to follow so that uh, there is parity maintained and some level of uh, reduction in the level of risk that uh, comes from such reporting. So risk data aggregation means defining, gathering and processing risk data according to the bank's risk reporting requirements to enable the bank to measure its performance against risk tolerance or appetite. So it's a risk measurement process, the performance and a performance measurement process and it's a holistic approach to the entire organization. So there are benefits for this that you can understand the risk holistically identify routes to return to financial health if you are uh, emerging from a crisis, if you know your strengths and weaknesses, obviously, and improve resolvability in the event of stress or failure. Again, same thing repeated. And the third one is better able to make strategic decisions. Again, same thing. You can make, take better decisions to drive the growth of your organization. So uh, models, there are different models that you create for risk and other things. And models that are on data, so data aggregation is very important. Model, there are, however, there are some model risks. That is input risk that you entered the wrong inputs. Second one is estimation risk that you need to estimate some factors or you need to take some assumptions. So there's a risk that those weren't correct. The third is valuation risk that the valuation derived from your model may not be entirely accurate or there might be a range provided which might be very wide, so you don't know. And the last one is hedging risk. What hedging risk over here means is basis risk per se, like I explained earlier. Model developers must demonstrate that the data used in the model is consistent with the theory and methodologies behind the model. You can't build a model from one uh, data set and then uh, use it, uh, using another data set, it gives a very uh, vague result. Your basically your model should be consistent is what it says. The Fed provides guidance to banks to effect, uh, on effective model risk management. Okay, so now uh, the 14 principles are given. There is honestly not much for me to explain. You can read through this or I'll be uh, adding a link in the comments to a sheet that has been created where it summarizes all these points, all the 14 points along with the main uh, content of those. However, I'd recommend you read through the entire portion. It's not very long. If you just skim through it once, uh, you'll have to do it once. You won't have to do it again, but always remember that you just need to do, remember the names of the things given in board, like these different types of models over here and other things that might arise further as you move further. But surely remember all the 14 names, just keep them in mind. They are simple words like frequency, clarity, usefulness, accuracy, and you may think it's very simple, like accuracy means accuracy of data, obviously, usefulness, usefulness of data, but what is frequency? The frequency of data, no, it's it, it's it's not exactly that. It, it talks about the frequency of reporting the data. Then distribution, the uh, data and the report should be distributed to which parties and how, how should they use it, how should they review it, then remedial actions in case there are some issues. And lastly, cooperation between all the parties involved. Fairly simple, just go through it. Nothing much for me to teach here. I'll, I'll link it in comments.